everyone. One of the keys to growing lots and lots of veggies is to feed your garden powerful organic nutrients on a regular basis. Today, we're talking composting, which is one of the most powerful nutrients you can feed your garden. Now, if composting sounds a little intimidating to you, don't worry, it's actually quick and simple. When you make your own, it's practically free. This video is a little bit different. I've taken my past composting episodes, put them all together in one place so you have a comprehensive step-by-step -step guide. By the end of this video, you're going to know how to make a DIY compost bin, how to compost in the compost sack right behind me, how to fill them both with materials that will break down for your garden, how to make hot compost, compost with grass clippings, with leaves, how to have a continual supply of compost, and how to use compost on your garden. There will be a digital table of contents in the video description so you can just click and watch the sections you're most interested in. But when you're done watching this video, you're going to know exactly how to make your own black gold that will feed your garden and grow you lots of veggies. So comment below, let me know what you learned in this video, what method you're using to compost in your backyard. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you at the end of the video. Hi everyone, well today I'm going to show you how to build a very quick, very simple and inexpensive compost bin that requires no special tools or special skills and then you're going to be able to fill that bin with some compost materials that will turn into garden gold for your spring garden. Let's do this. Let me tell you about today's project. I'm going to build my new compost bin right here next to this planter. I'm going to use some wire mesh fencing, some T-posts, I'm going to enclose it with a little door so that I have access in and out of the bin. I'm really excited about today's project and let me tell you about the supplies I'm going to use. A roll of wire mesh hardware cloth. This is the half inch, three foot tall wire mesh hardware cloth. Four four foot T-posts, a roll of bale wire, a tape measure, a hammer, and a small clip and a pair of wire cutters. The ideal size for a compost pile is really three by three feet. And the reason for that is because when it's that size, you can build up your compost enough to where it will generate enough heat and then it will break down a lot quicker. Now, I don't have a three by three space here because I'm building it next to this planter. This planter sticks out two and a half feet and I don't want the compost bin to stick out into the walkway. So I'm gonna make mine three foot by two and a half foot, which is just fine. So make sure that you flex a little bit to fit your garden space. So the first thing I'm going to do is drive in this T-post into the ground right here with my hammer. And you want to drive the T-post just so the T goes into the ground to provide it a lot of stability. All right, so my T-post is in there. It feels nice and sturdy. I'm going to measure off three feet to where I'm going to put the next T-post. Okay, it's gonna go right here. Grab my hammer. We'll get this one pounded in. Okay, and do the same for the next two posts. All right, we've got our four T-posts pounded in the ground. We're ready to roll with our hardware cloth. But before we do that, I just wanted to mention, if you wanna cut down on the cost of your project even more, you can use wooden stakes. That works fine too. I'm using the T-posts because they're sturdier, stronger, they're gonna last me longer, hold up to the elements better and the wind. Okay, now it's time to wrap the wire mesh hardware cloth around my T-posts. And I'm gonna need an extra hand for that, so camera guy's gonna come on over and help me. And again, you can adjust the prices or the cost of your compost bin by the type of hardware cloth or wire mesh, mesh fencing that you use. There's some out there that are less inexpensive, there's some that are more inexpensive, so just go with whatever fits your budget. You might even have some on hand, which means the project would be free. So all we're doing is pulling it around our four T-posts. Super easy to do. You don't need any special um, tools or even any special skills to do this. Super quick and simple. Okay, that's all, about all there is to it. Let me grab my roll of bale wire and we'll get this thing secured to the T-post. All I'm going to do here is just take the end of my wire mesh, wrap it around the T-post, kind of squeeze it around it like so. Okay, there we go. Give it a nice little grip there. 
And of course, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you wear gloves for this, because there are some sharp edges on that wire. I'm gonna take my bail wire here, just cut off a piece. Okay, piece about like that. And there's nice little holes here in the T-post that make it really easy for you to do this. Just take your bail wire. I'm actually gonna go around the other side here because it's easier to twist nice and tight. So take your bail wire, just twist it like so. It's got a good attachment there. And just snip off the end. Just bend this sharp end down. And there you go. I'm gonna put three of these, uh, attach it in three places along each T-post, and then we'll be ready for the, to make our door. Okay, now that I've got my hardware cloth wired down to my T-post, it's time to cut off the excess. I am gonna leave about six extra inches past my fourth T-post so I can form my door. And let me just show you guys how I'm gonna cut it in a little tip for what you don't want. So what basically what you do not want are exposed wires like this on the end of your uh, wire mesh because someone's gonna get cut on it. So you wanna cut it close to the edge here so there's no exposed wire showing. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece off and then we'll talk about how I'm gonna form the door for my compost bin. Now I'm gonna form our door here of our compost bin. Simply gonna fold over the exposed edge here just so there's no sharp edges. So we're gonna fold it about an inch or so over, inch and a half. And again, you can improvise and kind of modify this to fit the space that you have. That's the beauty of it. And I've got my little clip here I'm gonna to use to hook to the end of my door, or the end of my wire. <clears throat> okay, it's gonna be like my doorknob. And I have my little piece of bailing wire here. So I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it here to see if that's a good spot for it. That'll work just fine. <clears throat> Twist my bail wire on the other side so it will hold. And we're ready to clip it shut. So this clip is really easy just to undo. Open up my little door here. And I have all the access in the world to my compost bin to stir it around, to add more compost, whatever I need to do. So there you go, a really quick, simple and inexpensive compost bin that you can build in your backyard to get you started on composting for your spring garden. Hi everyone, on last week's composting video I showed you how to make a super easy DIY compost bin. Today I'm going to show you how to fill that bin with garden leaves, with food scraps. It's going to be a hot compost pile that will break down quickly so you'll have some compost for your spring garden. So here's what we're going to add to the bin. We're going to add some branches that I've trimmed off some trees in my yard that are kind of dried up. We're going to add some dry leaves. I'm going to add some food scraps, some coffee grounds, and some eggshells. So let's get started. So first what I'm gonna do is take my bin of branches that I've clipped off my trees in my yard, and I'm gonna lay them down on the bottom of my compost um, bin to give a little bit of air um, and airflow on the bottom. Now guys, I am absolutely loving my new compost bin that I just built. Look at this, I love this little door. I didn't have that before, so it's so much fun to have access to this bin to be able to get in here and build my compost exactly the way I want. So these branches I'm just laying down on the bottom and it's really important that compost has some airflow. By laying some, some kind of branches down on the bottom it's going to give the, the, um, the compost heap a nice good airflow. Next what I'm going to do is just start layering my materials. This is such an easy way to build a compost bin. Compost basically needs air and moisture to break down quickly. So here I'm just adding in a layer of leaves. These leaves are already a little bit wet because they were sitting out here in some rain this week. So I'm going to add a pretty good pile of leaves and then just hose it down layer by layer. So I'll hose this first pile down, this first layer down, and then I'm going to add a layer of food scraps. And I did collect them and keep them in the freezer. You can see here they still have ice on them. 
still partially frozen. I've had them sitting out here overnight. I'm not going to have to add a lot of water to this layer because the food scraps will melt and it'll add a lot of moisture to my layer here. And if you want to, you can go ahead and kind of chop these up with a shovel. I don't always do that because it takes a little more time and I like to keep my composting process really, really simple and quick. But if you want to do that, they'll break down even quicker. And by the way, guys, when you put your food scraps in the freezer, it really helps the decomposition process. It speeds it up. They're already partially decomposed. It's perfect for your compost pile. If you're building a compost pile for the first time, don't get too caught up in the whole brown and green ratio. You do want to have about one-third food scraps to about two-thirds leaves or grass clippings or garden waste, but just throw it in and let it rot. And next, I'm going to sprinkle in a layer of coffee grounds. And you can see I've got a bunch of coffee grounds here. I also have tea bags, which are just fine to add to your compost pile, along with some coffee filters and tea filters. Next, we've got a layer of eggshells. And these are just the materials that I happen to have. If you don't have leaves right now, just add in some grass clippings. Coffee grounds are always really good for getting your compost pile to heat up quickly. The grass clippings do that as well. Um, as far as food scraps go, you can pretty much put any food scraps in, but you do not want to put meat or dairy in, but anything else is just fine. So I'll go ahead and add a little bit of water here. And you want your compost, as far as moisture goes, when you're building your compost pile, you want it to be about the moisture that a wrung out sponge would be. And you can see right here, it's not dripping wet, but it definitely has some moisture to about what you would see in a wrung out sponge. So that is absolutely perfect. And then I'm just going to repeat the process till I have all of my materials added in. Got some more leaves to add. Okay, I've been layering and watering and layering and watering. And one technique I like to do to make sure the water gets underneath the leaves, because sometimes your leaves can be really dry that you're adding. So I just take my pitchfork and I'm just kind of twisting the top and then watering it down again, just to make sure that water soaks down. You don't really want any big dry spots in there or your compost won't break down very quickly. So I've got all my materials layered and watered down here in my bin. And you can see I didn't quite have enough to get to the three foot height of my bin which is the optimal height for compost, but no worries. All I'm gonna do is just pile it up here like in a volcano shape in the middle, and that'll help it um, be higher so it gets hotter on the inside and breaks down quicker, which is definitely the advantage of a hot compost pile. It breaks down quicker than a cold compost pile. And our compost pile is done. Gotta love it. So the next step for our compost piles, I'm gonna cover it and let it sit for about three days to get it nice and hot and steamy, starting the breakdown process. Then after that, I'm gonna turn it every two days and that will help it break it down quicker, checking it along the way to see if it needs more moisture and turning it to give it more air. So don't be intimidated by the compost process. It's super easy to get started. Just, just put this piece of plastic over it, use a tarp, use whatever you have available to you most important thing you can do is just get started. So please let me know in the comments below if you're going to build a compost pile to get ready for your spring garden. Make sure you like me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any garden updates. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Hi everyone. We're back at the compost pile again today. We built this pile about three days ago. Hopefully you guys caught that video. Today what I'm going to do is check the temperature check the moisture and give the pile a turn because those are the three things that are important to check on to make sure our compost breaks down quickly. So let's take a look and see what we got under here. Cover my compost pile for a couple of different reasons. Number one, I want to give it the best chance of heating up as hot as possible and this kind of acts like a little greenhouse effect to get it nice and hot under there. The second reason why is because I don't want the rain completely soaking my pile. So just get it uncovered and see what we got under here. Looking good, it's a nice earthy smell. And one of the first things I've noticed is that my compost pile has shrunk, which of course is very normal. It's going to settle over, you know, the first couple of days. It's shrunk by about a third. So let's get in here and check the temperature. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. One way I've used in the past that is totally a free method is I had this piece of rebar or some kind of piece of metal that put in the pile for about 10 minutes or so, hold it to my wrist. This feels hot, which is definitely a good sign, and this is a great way to check how hot your pile is. 
Now the second way, which is a little more you know, on the accurate side, is by using a compost thermometer. And I've been trying one of these out. This um, compost thermometer is by Rio Temp Instruments. It's a really cool little handy tool, again, to have around your yard. And just put this in the middle of your pile. It takes you know, just a couple minutes to register where the temperature is. And mine, it looks like it's around 120 degrees, which is definitely hot enough to be breaking down. So this is a cool handy tool if you want to spend a little bit, bit, bit more money. And Rio Temp has been great to work with us and offer us again a 15% discount for CaliKim subscribers. So if you're interested in that, the link will be in the description box below. You can pop down there and check out their, their link for this compost thermometer. So my pile is definitely heating up. I'm going to actually pull both of these tools out break open my pile and see about the moisture. Let's take a look here. And wow, can you guys see the steam coming up from the middle of my pile? That's pretty cool. That means the inside of my pile is cooking, which is going to break down that compost even quicker. So this compost pile definitely got hot and it looks like it's pretty wet in here. And let me show you what, what I'm looking for. Grab a handful and you can tell when I squeeze it together it kind of stays together. If it was too dry, it would look more like it does here on the outside where these leaves are really dry. But I'm squeezing it, it's staying together, it's, it's holding that ball shape, and it's really about as moist as a wrung out sponge. So that's good too. I don't think I'm going to have to add a lot more water to this pile, but I love how it's steaming. This is really a great sign. So the next thing I'm going to do is turn it so I can bring all the outside materials to the in and the inside materials to the out to get my full pile composted. And some people ask, isn't this compost so hot that it's, it's gonna self combust? And that's one reason the compost thermometer is super handy because once it gets into the super hot zone, which is 140, then you do kind of have to worry about that. But right now I was about 120, which is perfect. And wow, look at that, this is looking good. So basically just taking the inside, moving it to the out, making sure my pile gets plenty of air. And I'm feeling the heat already, guys. And hey, this is a great workout too. If your pile is too dry at this point, you definitely wanna add some water and then just work it in with your pitchfork so that it's nice and moist throughout. So what I'm gonna do is just pile it up again into the volcano kind of cone shape that I had before. So it gets nice and hot again because that's what's gonna help it break down. Let's get it nice and high, as high as I possibly can in my new compost bin. And I am really liking this thing because of the high sides. I can pile up my compost nice and high. Okay, it's looking pretty good. And what I'm going to do is just leave my compost thermometer right in the pile. And that's one nice little handy thing about this thermometer. Leave it in the pile. I'm going to come out here and check it every couple of days to make sure it's still getting hot. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it as long as it's getting hot. If it's not getting hot, I'm going to need to add some more materials, maybe some more leaves, some more grass clippings to get this pile heated up because that's what's going to help it break down. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and close up my bin. And again, I'm really loving this little door. Helps keep my bin contained. Also helps keep my dog out. Don't want my dog eating all those food scraps. And that's all there is to it. Don't let composting scare you. It's really simple. It's really quick. Just follow the steps in the video and you're going to have a hot compost pile in no time. Well, there's been lots of conversation over on my Facebook page and Instagram about composting. So make sure you join in the conversation over there and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any garden updates. But the most important thing is that you just get composting so that you have some black gold for your spring garden very soon. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Feeding Your Garden series. One of the keys to a productive garden is to feed your plants and garden soil powerful organic nutrients on a regular basis. So far in this series, we've learned about worm castings, worm tea, and my favorite organic fertilizer, Trifecta Plus, and how they feed our gardens throughout the growing season. Well, today we're talking about compost, why it is such a powerful nutrient for our gardens. I'm gonna show you how to build a very simple, hot compost pile that's gonna break down quickly so that you have some beautiful black gold to feed your spring garden with. Compost is simply decomposed organic material, such as leaves, grass clippings, or vegetable scraps. I like to add compost to my garden each planting season because not only does it reduce my volume of trash significantly, 
adds nutrient-rich organic matter to the soil, and promotes soil microbes, which really help with plant growth. Now, we gardeners like to call it black gold. You ask 10 different gardeners how to compost, you get 11 different methods and techniques. You can make just a freestanding pile in your yard, or you can make a DIY compost bin or purchase a ready-made bin. I've done all three. Here is a DIY compost bin made out of simple wire mesh fencing and T-posts. And over here, I've got a ready-made bin. It's actually a compost sack. Works really nice for making that black gold that we all want in our garden. Well, I've got some more composting materials collecting behind me. I've got some leaves, some food scraps, some coffee grounds. And we're going to make a new hot compost pile today and show you how easy it is. I'm going to make my compost pile today in one of these compost sacks. This one's by Smart Pots. Now, I love the compost sack because it makes composting so quick, simple, super inexpensive. Let's get started. Now, because the sack is so tall, I'm just gonna fold the sides of it down to make it easier to add my compost materials. You can add anything to your compost pile that was once a plant. You just don't wanna add meat or dairy products. Here I've got leaves. I've got food scraps. I've got coffee grounds. Now, all I'm gonna do is start layering my items into the bin. So first, I'm gonna throw my leaves in. This is such an easy way to compost. And compost basically needs air and water to break down quickly. Got a good amount of leaves in there. So now I'm going to water down the layers as we go. These leaves are really dry, so we're going to water them down and then mix it in. Because you want it to be about the moisture of a wrung out sponge. And the smaller your leaves are, the quicker they're going to break down into compost. Mine are already shredded up pretty good, but if you want to shred them up, a really easy way to do it is to lay them out on your lawn and run over them with your lawnmower. These need just a little bit more water, so I'm going to water them down again. Next, I'm going to add a layer of food scraps. Now, I like to collect my food scraps in the freezer so I can make a big, huge pile all at once. And these are all just a little bit icy still, even though I took them out of the freezer last night. So I shouldn't even have to add too much water to this layer. Now, if you want to, you can chop them up with the shovel to break them down even more. Now I'm just going to keep repeating that process till my compost bin is full, watering in between layers if my materials are too dry. Now don't get too caught up in the ratio of browns to greens. Typically browns come from trees like leaves and pine needles and the greens come from kitchen scraps and coffee grounds. Typically you want to have three parts brown and one part green. But again, don't get too caught up in that. Just basically throw them in and let them rot. Coffee grounds are great to add to your compost pile and really get things cooking. If you have trouble collecting enough coffee grounds at your house, Ask around at the lo local coffee shops. They're usually willing to collect it for you and give it away for free. One thing I really do like about the compost sack is if you don't have enough materials collected to make a big, tall, three foot high compost pile, the sides fold down really nicely so you can make a nice small one and still keep it contained and neat looking on the side of your house. So our compost pile is done. Got nice and moist, about the consistency of a wrung out sponge. So that's just about right. 
and I filled this compost sack just as full as I possibly could because when you're hot composting, the bigger, the better. You can certainly make a small pile, but it'll heat up quicker and break down faster if it gets nice and hot. Now I like to put a piece of rebar or a metal garden stake in the middle of my compost pile so I can come out here after it's been sitting about three days to check and see if it's gotten hot. Or you can use a compost thermometer if you have one. So the next step is to cover it up to keep any rain or moisture off and the cover also keeps the heat in to help it heat up faster. Now as your compost sits here, be aware it's going to settle just like the compost sack next to it has. Now just to show you how well this hot compost method works, the compost sack I have already going here for a couple of weeks, it's cooking away right in the green hot zone there at about 90 degrees. Now I've been coming out and turning this every couple of days and so far it's working great and it's time to turn it again. When you turn it and water it every two to three days, it's getting the air and moisture it needs to compost quickly and will break down in a matter of about three to four weeks so you have some great black gold to feed your garden. So I'm just gonna twist my pitchfork to turn my pile and wow, look at that steam coming out. This compost pile is cooking. And it looks like, it feels nice and hot. It's still pretty moist, but if it looks dry, you can go ahead and put some water on it. Look at how it's nice and black, starting to break down beautifully. Wow, this looks great. Now if your compost pile is not heating up, chances are you need to add a few more green ingredients. So add some more coffee grounds or grass clippings that haven't been treated with chemicals. If it's too wet, add some more dry ingredients like dried shredded leaves and reduce your watering. So whether you have a hot compost pile that breaks down quickly or a small colder one, don't worry about it. The cold one will still break down eventually and compost will happen. You can tell your compost is finished when it's nice and black and it has a nice earthy smell and there's not too many recognizable materials in it. Now this is ready to add to my containers and to my garden soil. Compost is super easy to add to the garden. You can just add a handful to your existing container plants, add a handful in when you're transplanting and add an inch or two over your garden beds as you're getting ready for spring. Well, I'm super excited to see the compost and these compost sacks break down. And this compost sack is amazing. It has about a hundred gallon capacity, which is gonna provide me a lot of compost for my spring garden. Thank you so much Smart Pots for supplying the compost sack and for sponsoring this episode. To learn more about Smart Pots, go to smartpots.com. There's a link in the video description on where you can purchase one. Composting made quick, simple and inexpensive it's a great way to use something you would normally throw away to make wonderful, powerful organic nutrients to feed your spring garden. So comment below, let me know if you're building a hot compost pile or a cold one. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Hi everyone, I'm over here by my hot compost pile that we built just a few weeks ago. If you missed that video, you definitely wanna go back and check it out so you can jump in on composting and have some beautiful black gold to feed your spring garden with. Well, I've had several questions on turning the compost in these big compost sacks. So I wanna jump on here today and share with you a few tips. Well, in just a moment, I'm gonna show you how I like to turn the compost in my compost sack. But before I do that, I thought you might like to see my compost system that I have going on here. So I basically have three different compost piles at various stages of completion to help ensure that I have a continual supply of compost for my garden. So this first bin here that I did a video on a little while back, and I do like to keep all my bins covered just to keep the moisture out and the heat in. You can see this piece of plastic has gotten all ripped up by the winds that we've had. But basically, this bin is made out of a wire mesh um, fencing and some T-posts, a really simple bin to build. But this is really my bin that's a work in progress. So I basically just built this with a bunch of um, shredded leaves. And I also throw in here my food scraps that I collect in the kitchen. 
Now, sometimes I do collect those food scraps in the freezer so I can build a big, huge pile at once, but my freezer was kind of starting to smell and I, I really didn't want to do that anymore. So now I come out here and throw them in this bin and I do come out and water this down and turn it about once a week, but I'm really not too concerned if this is a hot compost pile because I'm going to move this into one of my compost sacks when that compost finish. So this is pile number one. Compost pile number two is in a Smart Pots compost sack. And this is the one you saw cooking away on my hot compost video a few weeks ago. And it's still cooking pretty good. Now I was out here and turned it a few days ago, but let's check the temperature, my compost thermometer. And it looks like it's still nice and hot at about 100 degrees, still active. And you can see this compost is starting to break down. It looks beautiful, nice and black not quite finished but i have been using it as mulch on my garden beds so this will break down over the period over the next few weeks when it's fully broken down i will put it into this bin right here and that leaves this compost sack open to move my materials from bin number one into bin number two and we'll get that cooking and breaking down for me also Pile number one is my least broken down pile. Pile number two is my most broken down pile. And pile number three is somewhere in the middle. Now this is the pile we built a few weeks ago on the hot compost pile video. We built it in a Smart Pots compost sack, which by the way is a super convenient way to build a compost pile. But when we built it, it was filled all the way to the top with our compost materials. And you can see how much it settled as the compost has broken down. Now I've been turning it every three to four days. It's definitely cooking away. So let's put our thermometer in and see how hot it is right now. Wow, this pile's really cooking at 120 degrees, which means we have the right mix of browns and greens, the right size. This pile will be breaking down quickly to give us black gold for our spring garden. So let's dig in with our pitchfork and get this compost pile turned. First, I'm gonna fold up the sides so we don't have a lot of leaves spilling over the edge, but if it does, it's no big deal. And I'm gonna get in here with my pitchfork and just start giving it a twist. Now the two things compost needs to break down are air and water. If you can get it hot enough, it'll break down even quicker. So basically I'm just digging with my pitchfork and turning it. I can already feel the heat from my hot compost. Now if your compost looks dry at this point, you definitely want to add some water. But mine looks pretty good. I added some water the other day, so it's not too bad. Now people have asked me, how do you get to the bottom of this compost sack? Well, it is a bit of a workout, but it can be done. So basically I just twist and turn my leaves, pile them up to one side and dig down in there as good as I can to get the bottom layer. But even if you don't bring the bottom layer all the way up to the top, you can get down in there and get it twisted around and get that bottom layer good and aerated. And I'm bringing up some from the bottom and you can see how it's looking good. It's definitely breaking down. Whew, this is a workout. The most important thing is that you get air down to that bottom layer. And I'll just do the same thing on the other side. Now notice how much darker the materials are that I'm bringing up from the bottom are, which is a good sign that my compost is breaking down and it's gonna provide me some nice black gold and organic nutrients for my garden. So exciting. Well, the compost is looking fabulous. All the turning and watering in this compost sack is really doing the trick. Hi everyone. Well, today I'm gonna to show you how to make some super simple compost. You can do it even over the winter time when it's super cold outside so that you have some nice fresh compost come spring planting time in a couple of months that you can feed your garden with. Now it's super easy, just uses the power of the sun and something you probably already have lots of around your backyard. Leaves. Well, I love using leaves around my garden. They make great mulch for the garden beds and when they're nice and broken down, they make great compost to feed your soil as well. Really bring in the worms, add organic matter to the soil and add a lot of great aeration to the soil also. Now, I don't have a lot of big trees around my garden, but if you watched our live stream on Sunday, you saw my friend Harry stop by. He always is so kind to collect all the leaves from his big trees for me. So I've got a couple nice big bags today. And with one very small modification, we can turn these bags of leaves into compost in just a couple of months, or even less with solar energy. 
Now a lot of the leaves in this bag are already nice and shredded up, but I'm going to get in here with my gloves and see if I can crunch them up some more because the smaller the leaves are, the quicker they're going to break down. You can also do this with the lawnmower. You can just pour your bag of leaves out over your lawn and run over them with your lawnmower and that breaks them down nice and small as well and it's really quick. But for the small amount, I'm just going to get in here with my hands. My leaves are getting nice and shredded. They're looking really good. And now it's time to harness the power of the sun. Now, if you live in a cold winter climate and it's snowy and cold outside, you might think that you can't make compost over the winter time. Not true. All you need is heat and moisture. Well, you might ask, how am I gonna get heat outside when I live where it's really cold? Well, one simple modification for these bags of leaves, instead of using a clear plastic bag, I'm actually gonna put them into a black plastic bag and that will act as a solarizer, will heat up the compost, heat up the leaves and break them down over the winter. So let's get started on this. I'm just gonna transfer my leaves over to this black bag. Do you remember what I said earlier in the video about the two things that are needed to break something down into compost? That's right, heat and moisture. Well, your black plastic bag will act as a solarizer when you put it in the sun, heating up your leaves so it breaks them down into nice compost. Now, the second thing we need though is some moisture. Now, my leaves are pretty dry. If your leaves have been outside in the rain and the snow and have gotten wet, you won't need to worry about this part. But I'm gonna just add some water to my bag here. Get these leaves nice and moisten down. So my leaves have the moisture that they need in here now to break down over the winter time. Just one step left. That is to tie up this garbage bag and put it in the sunniest spot in my yard. Now if you live in an area where you get a lot of snow, you want to come out every now and then and make sure it's not completely buried in snow. Brush some of the snow off. Make sure you still have some good moisture in there. But that's pretty much it. You're going to let the sun do the work over the winter time so when it's time for spring planting, you'll have some nice compost to feed your garden beds with. If you'd like to support me here on my channel, please head over to my website and check out the digital products I have for sale over there. We have a really fun garden coloring book. Coloring is not just for kids these days, you know, drawn from actual photos of my garden. So that's a lot of fun. You'll also find my ebook called Growing Five Warm Weather Vegetables Made Easy, detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how you can grow five warm weather vegetables just in time for spring planting. And both my digital products also make great Christmas gifts as well. So thank you so much for your support. Comment below, let me know how you're composting over the winter time. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Hi everyone. I am really excited about this compost. I know I've done lots of compost videos before, but this one is working out really good for me right now. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about what I've been doing, and then I'm gonna build a new compost pile based on how I built this one. So this here is a fairly finished compost pile in about three weeks, and I cannot believe how hot this compost pile got within the first 24 hours of me building it. Hey, look at this stuff, nice and black. There's still chunks of uh, you know sticks and different things in it, but for the most part, I'm calling this done. Nice and black and, oh, it smells so good. I love the smell. Now, just to let you know a little bit about the system that I do is I build a compost pile completely from start to finish, let it compost for about three weeks, and then when it's done, I move it over into this silver bin right here. And that's what I'm gonna, gonna do right now because I'm gonna show you how I built this pile. And I was really excited because it finished up really, really quickly and got super hot, just like I said. So I'm just gonna scoop this stuff over into my other bin here, and that way I can use it for my garden. And I don't usually like to sift my compost. I just throw it in the garden and take out the, the big chunks, but this is done enough for me. I've got a whole bunch more materials that I need to get making a, another compost pile. So this is all gonna go into this bin. Okay, that should take care of it. There we go, this is ready 
for a new compost pile. Okay, so let me just tell you a little bit about what I did here. And I was actually really surprised that it heated up so quickly. I used simply food scraps and grass clippings, a little bit of coffee grounds, a little bit of eggshells, and a little bit of leaves. And I think the reason why it heated up so quickly is because I had way more grass clippings than I usually have. And wow, seriously, you guys, I had to come out here and check on this pile every couple of days because honestly, I was a little bit nervous about how hot it was getting and being so close to my house. So I'm gonna go ahead and build a new pile. I've collected a bunch of materials and just show you what I did. I just used what I had on hand. And I just actually want to encourage you guys that composting is so easy. Just use whatever you have on hand. That's what I did. And this time it just worked really, really well. So there's no way I'm getting rid of those grass clippings from when I mow the lawn. So let me just tell you a little bit about what I do. I have my, my bin here. And first I've got over here a pile of a little woodier um, things that I pull out of the garden. I'm gonna put this on the bottom because that'll help give a little bit of air and a little bit of substance to the bottom of the pile. So I'm actually gonna take my sharp ended shovel here and just kind of pound all this stuff up, break it up as best I can into pieces. And I just throw stuff that I pull out of, garden, out of the garden in this pile and I save it for when I am building a new compost pile. Okay, and I'm just gonna layer this stuff. Here's my pitchfork, here's my pitchfork. Layer by layer into my bin here. And the important thing is to water down each layer because compost needs water and air. That's pretty much all I've done is just spread a thin layer here of this kind of woody garden waste. And then pound it up a little bit more I like to try and get it as, you know, pretty broken up, although I'm not uh, hard and fast about that, but I'm gonna chop it with my sharp ended shovel. And then I water each layer, grab my hose over here. It's really pretty easy. It seems like the more I think about it, honestly, the less it works. The quicker I do it and the simpler I keep it, the better it works. So I got my one pile here and then I, I throw a handful of finished compost that just kind of activates it. And my next layer is gonna be grass clippings. So I've got a pile of grass clippings over here. Just take my pitchfork, grab a couple. And these kind of tend to get matted down. So I do have to get in there and spread them out. These I think we uh, used from when we cut the grass a couple of weeks ago. So they're kind of matted and you can tell they've already started to decay a little bit. There's that white kind of grass mold. Now, let me just tell you, when you make compost with a lot of grass clippings, once it starts to break down, it's gonna smell, smell like manure, <laughs> okay? Even camera guy goes, ooh, that stuff smells. And the reason for that is, if you think about how cows produce manure, they pretty much chew grass and it passes through their stomach and uh, it's basically decomposed grass that they poop out. So this isn't the best smelling stuff in the world, but hey, it works. Okay, so I've got my pile of grass clippings here. I wanna kinda of break them up, and then I'm gonna add some food scraps. So let me go grab my food scraps. Okay, before I add my food scraps, I am gonna throw a little bit of water on these grass clippings. Not too much, because a lot of my fruits, food scraps have been sitting in my extra refrigerator, or even my freezer for a couple of weeks while well, I collected enough to build a new compost pile and a lot of them are pretty damp. So your compost pile, what I always try and do is it should be about the dampness of a wet sponge. Like when you squeeze it, it should kind of stick together. So these food scraps had a lot of moisture in them so I don't need to add a lot of moisture here to the grass clippings. So I'm gonna dump some on. Oh, those are real wet. Those are like old watermelon rinds and all kinds of stuff that have been sitting for a while. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and chop this up. Now this is just how I do it. There's lots of different ways to compost, but this is just what I found works best for me. And kind of the nice thing about it is, it is pretty physical. I know some people buy those you know, fancy compost tumblers and that's great, but this is free, it works for me, and it's also a good workout, so I really like it. 
Okay, so I got a layer of food scraps in there. And next, what I'm gonna add is, I've collected just, not a lot of leaves, but a little bit of leaves that I had around my garden, just sitting under, under trees and that kind of thing. And I think that's the difference here between the way I compost in the winter and the way I'm composting now in the summertime when I have lots of grass clippings. Don't have a lot of leaves now like I do in the winter time. But I do have a few, so I'm gonna add those in because those do add good browns, which definitely help heat up your pile too. So add a layer in. And these leaves are pretty well crushed up and broken down, so that really helps too. It'll help them break down faster in the compost pile. And again, I'm watering here. Oops. Got a little, don't want that in there. Watering here again. And now it's time for a little more of this finished compost. Just sprinkle a little bit. Okay, and then I'm pretty much just gonna repeat the layers till I get this pile as high as I possibly can with the materials that I have. So let me go ahead and do that and we'll come back and show you how it looks. Okay, we are almost done, and my last few layers are actually gonna be all grass clippings. So I'm gonna to wanna to put those, actually, I'm putting them in pretty thin layers and watering, because the grass clippings tend to get matted down. So you do wanna water if you have to add a lot all at once. Water in between layers. A few more, and then we are just about done. Okay, well, as you can see, it's kind of a messy job. Doesn't help that my hose leaks either. Look at that. Got to get that fixed too. Okay, so I've got my layers built. Now, some of you might be saying, and I know what you're thinking, that there's no way this pile at this height is going to get hot. I actually got a wonderful tip from a viewer last fall when I was first trying to build a hot compost pile, and this viewer said to build this up into like a volcano type um, shape. So that's usually what I do. Once I get my layers built, I just scoop it all up as high as I possibly can. Now, the ideal height is really three feet, but you know what? I've never gotten it three feet. I just collect the materials that I have, get it as high as I possibly can with what I have on hand. So I would just encourage you to do that. Don't wait to have enough to make a three foot pile. Just start composting. And that's what I did here with these grass clippings. And you just kind of pull everything to the center and get it as high as you possibly can. And you don't even really have to have a frame. I just ac actually had this old wood frame here, but you could really just pile it up on the ground and it would work just as well. Okay, so I think I've got this about as high as it's gonna get. Okay, and it doesn't matter if the layers all stay together or anything like that. Okay, that's probably maybe two feet high. I don't know, we'll see. And I'm gonna water it down one more time so it's good and wet. And what I like to do to be able to tell if it's getting hot, I've got this little, it's not a piece of rebar, but it is metal. And I like to just stick it in the middle. I'll put it right over here. I stick it in the middle so that way I can tell come tomorrow when I pull this out and kind of hold it on my skin here how hot it is okay I don't have to dig into it all right so I'm gonna leave that and I actually cover it I'm gonna cover it with a tarp and I am hoping that within 24 hours this pile is steaming hot if it worked like it did the last time it'll be steaming hot by tomorrow afternoon now I'm gonna turn this in three days and we're gonna come back and do another video then and we're gonna show you guys the next steps. Basically, we're gonna turn it and this pile's gonna be done in about three weeks. So that's all there is to it, really. Use what you have on hand, that's all I did. It's very simple to compost and the reason why you wanna compost is because you're creating soil for your garden, something that will feed your garden out of the things that you're gonna throw away. Your grass clippings, your food scraps, your garden waste, your, your whatever you have around the house. That's all there is to it, folks. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. We'll be back to show you the progress pretty soon on the next video. 
Good morning, everyone. Just getting ready to make some breakfast, and I want to go out and check my compost pile that I built. Uh, I think it was like a day and a half ago. Just want to see if it's hot yet. The last one I built with grass clippings got hot like 24 hours later. So I want to go give it a look before breakfast. It's a good sign if you can smell the grass clippings when you walk around the corner. Well, right now I think I smell the neighbors cooking breakfast, so <laughs> we'll have to see. Okay, here we go. Well, it feels warm. Let's uncover it and take a look. I'm really hoping this one works as well as the last one. Whew, now you can smell it. Okay, here's my mineral rod I put in the other day. Let's see if it's hot. Ooh, definitely, definitely is. Okay, this is working, guys. I'm not going to turn it today because what I like to do is turn it on the third day. We'll flip it around and put the bottom layer on the top and the top layer on the bottom. So when we do that, we'll come back again. But this pile is definitely getting warm. It's still nice and wet. I think this is going to cook down pretty fast. So just a little quick little progress report here on my compost pile. We'll see in a little while. Well, I've been having trouble with my compost pile getting it hot. Now I'll tell you in a minute why it's important to have a hot compost pile. But first, I've rebuilt my pile, made a new, hopefully hot compost pile based on some viewer suggestions. So I'm really excited to see if it's hot. Let's go check it out. I've got it all covered up here because we've had some rain this week. It's been sitting for about a week now. And wow, the first thing I've noticed as I uncover it is it has shrunk tremendously. When I built it last week, it was probably about up to here. It was about two and a half feet high and it's gone down by about a foot. So that's one thing. Now let's check and see. I've got this piece of rebar sticking in here and I did this because rebar is metal. It conducts heat. If I pull it out and it's hot, that means we've gotten some success. So let's pull it out and check it out. It definitely feels warm. All right, let me dig into it and see how it looks on the inside. Okay, what we're gonna do, what I'm gonna do is just dig into the middle because that's where it's gonna be the hottest. And it's got a lot of, oh wow, I don't know if you can see the steam coming up, but it's got steam coming up from the middle and that is definitely a good sign. Look my hand in there. Yes, it is definitely cooking. Folks, we have success. Let me pull it apart and we'll check out the middle and see how well it's breaking down so far. What you want to do for a compost pile is move the inside to the outsides and the outsides to the inside so all the material can break down. And it's definitely breaking down really well so far. Wow, in just a week it has broken down tremendously. Wow, look at that steam. That is great. I'm so excited. Perfect. And look how well it's breaking down. A week ago, there was, this was just a pile of leaves and grass clippings. Now let me just tell you real quick the benefits of a hot compost pile. For me, I was putting the cold compost in my garden and I was getting all kinds of weed seeds and vegetable seedlings popping up in places where I didn't want them. So I decided to try and build a hot compost pile so that I could put the compost on my garden and not have to worry about that because a hot compost pile kills all that and kills any diseases from plants that you might have put in your compost pile that has diseases. So if you want to build a hot compost pile, go back and check out part two on how this was built and you'll see how you can have a hot, hot compost pile as well. So hey, I'm really excited about the success of this. Thank you so much to all the viewers who contributed their suggestions and their tips. And hopefully by the springtime, this will be completely broken down. I'll have some great compost to put on my garden. So thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time. Hi everyone, just grabbing some compost here today. I'm gonna make some compost tea. Not only does compost tea feed my garden plants, but it's quick, the way I like to make it. It's very simple, and best part about it is it's free. So I wanna share with you five reasons why I love using compost tea in my garden, and then show you how easy it is to make. Well, the first thing I love about using compost tea in my garden is it provides my plants with lots of great fast-acting nutrients. The second thing I love about making my own compost tea is it really increases my plants growth, which gets food on my table quicker. 
third, I love how it provides all the beneficial bacteria, microbes for the soil, which really help my plants be healthy and strong and really tolerate stress better. The fourth thing is it avoids the use of chemical fertilizers in my garden because I want to have an organic garden. And the fifth thing is, and one of my favorites, is it's quick, it's simple, and because I'm using my own compost, it's totally free. So let me show you how easy it is. So making compost tea is so easy, you only need two ingredients, just compost and water. So I'm going to make it here in this five gallon bucket and just fill it up with water. So one thing that's important when you're making your compost tea is to let your bucket sit for about 24 hours because this way all the chlorine will evaporate out. If you use chlorinated water, it'll kill off the beneficial bacteria and microbes, which are one thing that make compost tea so effective for your garden. So I actually have a bucket over here that I made yesterday. It's been sitting out here for about 24 hours. So all the chlorine is out of it. So let me move this over and it's so easy to make compost tea. The only thing you really need to do is dump your compost into your bucket. Now, that's the great thing about this method is it's easy. It's just a simple steeped bucket brewed tea. In fact, I don't even use a bubbler. Bubbler a lot of people use, which is great for aeration to help the beneficial bacteria and microbes really get some good action in there. But I just like to use a stick, keeps it easier. If I keep it simple, then I'll actually do it. So just stir it around here. And I am gonna let this sit for about 24 to 48 hours so it gets nice and strong, has a lot of good nutrition for my plants. And I'm gonna come out here and stir it probably in the morning and in the evening. And that way it gets some good aeration over the next couple of days. Now you can use it right away if you want to, it'll be a little bit weaker, but I am gonna use it right away today to water my strawberry towers right back here. Okay, so I'm just gonna take some of the compost tea from the orange bucket here and put it into my watering can. And you can actually strain it if you want to. To, so that you don't have all the compost in your watering can. I don't really care about that. And you can see I took the nozzle off my watering can so it doesn't get all plugged up by the compost. So I'm just gonna fill my watering can here. And my strawberry crate tower will, actually, will absolutely love the compost tea. I try and water with it about once a week. And let me show you how great my strawberry towers are looking too. They're, the strawberries they're producing are absolutely gorgeous. Look at these, they're nice and big, they're red. Oh my gosh, I actually love these. They're really sweet and juicy and they love the compost tea. So it's super easy to do. I'm just gonna water, water with it like this. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's really, really easy. It's something incredible that you can use on any of your garden plants. You can actually water with it as often as you want. It's never gonna burn your plants. It's just gonna provide a nice gentle fertilizer for them. And you can even add some fish fertilizer or some Epsom salt if you want to, to make it an organic fertilizer and just water your plants this way anytime you want to. So that's really all there is to it. Compost tea is so quick, so simple and free to use in your garden. I mean, look what it's doing to my strawberries. I absolutely love it. If you're using compost tea in your garden, comment below, let me know and let me know how you like to make it. And make sure you go over and visit my website, calikimgardenhome.com. People are sharing some incredible, life-changing stories over there. You don't want to miss it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.